6 predictions video where I go through every single matchup in the upcoming weekend slate and I pick which teams I think are winning and losing and why. So first up, we just had Thursday Night Football last night and I'm glad to announce I finally got it right after 3 straight weeks, 4 straight weeks of being wrong on Thursday. We finally got back in the winning column and we got the Niners over the Seahawks correct uh, in an entertaining game I'll say. Uh, but, you know, we'll save any more thoughts about this vi about this matchup for the recap. Let's just move straight into the Sunday lineup. So, once again, this week we open up with a London game. The NFL and its push to get a more international audience has been doing more and more games across the country. Not across the country, across the globe. And so, we saw a London game last week. We see another one this week. And we have the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Chicago Bears. Now, I have to say, hats off to the Jacksonville Jaguars last week getting their first victory against the Colts. And the Chicago Bears had an impressive 3-2 and two standing after the first five weeks. You know, their defense has been legit. Their offense getting better week by week. And even though Jacksonville did look better, they still allowed a lot of points. And I think that the Chicago defense is not going to allow a 37 point blow up like the Colts did. Now as far as the Chicago offense, you know, back to back weeks, no turnovers. One week you were getting the job done, but it wasn't that, you know, uh, it, not, I'm not going to say impressive, but it wasn't that flashy. It was a uh, grit and grind. You, you won against the Rams, but then you come out against the Panthers and you really show out that this offense is clicking. DeAndre Swift finally looks good. Uh, and then you have Caleb Williams connecting with these wide receivers. Very talented wide receiver group. So I'm going to go with the Chicago Bears here. They are finally putting something together that looks nice. Already at 3-2, and two, taking on one of the worst teams in the league. I think that they are in a good place and they are well positioned to win this game in London. Now, moving into the Sunday morning slate, we're going to have... Well, I mean, it's still Sunday morning, but a more manageable time if you're on the West Coast. Uh, so we've got, first up, a matchup between the Green Bay Packers and the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, in this game, uh, Jordan Love back at home. He will be taking on Kyler Murray in this Cardinals team. Uh, as of last week, it was kind of surprising. The Cardinals come from behind victory against the 49ers. I don't know if... Others were expecting it, but I certainly was not. They were down pretty big, but an 11-point fourth quarter comeback attempt, uh, you know, took them to the promised land. They take the lead with a couple minutes left, and then Brock Purdy interception kind of closes the deal. They win that one, and then the Green Bay Packers on the other hand. Jordan Love finally gets a win. They had two wins on the back of Malik Neighbor, sorry, Malik Willis, and, uh, Jordan Love gets one against the Rams. The Rams also tried to come back, but they were unsuccessful in their attempts getting stopped on fourth down uh, in this game. I am expecting another Green Bay Packers win over here. You know, so far, I just think that they've been the better team through five weeks. Jordan Love looks solid. Like, uh, coming back from this injury, he doesn't look that hampered. I think that he will have a decent time against this Cardinals defense that has been iffy. Like last week, they only allowed 23 points, uh, really, to the offense, only 16. But in other weeks, they have been absolutely decimated by teams like the Commanders, by the Bills. And I do think that the Green Bay Packers are going to be able to pick apart this Cardinals defense. And the Cardinals offense, on the other hand, it's been an up-and-down journey, like uh, getting some big wins at times, but also getting losses. And they were really stymied against the Commanders there. So rolling out with the Packers. Uh, here on Sunday. Next up, we have a divisional matchup between the Indianapolis Colts and the Tennessee Titans. What a fun game that will be. Uh, I found out recently, I, I don't think anyone pointed it out because it's probably a game no one was watching, but Will Levis actually did not get benched for throwing an interception. He hurt his throwing shoulder, and so that's why we didn't see him complete that last game. Uh, I believe it was against the Dolphins before they went on by. Now I do think that Will Levis is scheduled to be back and serve as the starter. If he's not ready to go, then it'll be Mason Rudolph, I believe. As for the Colts, it's been Joe Flacco these last two weeks, but I think enough time has passed that Anthony Richardson 
is actually ready to come back. Uh, and even though I do like their odds more if Joe Flacco is in, I'm still going to give the Colts victory here uh, with Anthony Richardson in at quarterback just because I don't like the Titans quarterback room at all. Uh, Will Levis is a loose cannon. He is going to throw at least one pick, uh, if not more. Create some of the craziest turnovers you've ever seen in your life. And then Mason Rudolph. I know that he was able to do pretty well behind the Steelers coaching staff last year, but the Titans are not the Steelers. They have a rookie head coach um, who's been throwing Will Levis under the bus, but for good reason. Mason Rudolph himself, I don't think of him as a skilled quarterback. He definitely is like backup material. And even though Anthony Richardson has been if he, um, he did look good at the start of the game two, two weeks ago against the Steelers, and so if he can pick up on that note, then I think that the Colts have a, a better roster, a better shot of winning this game, and if he is not ready to play, then I actually like their, mo their odds even more, so I'm going to go with the Colts taking down the Titans in this one. Next up, we have a game between the Houston Texans and the New England Patriots. This one, we're going to see Drake May make his first ever start for the Pats. Uh, Jacoby Brissett got the starts in weeks 1 through 5, and the New England offense really has not been able to get it going. Weeks 1 and 2, they did a lot with their run game, but in terms of passing the ball, the Patriots are yet to cross five, oh, sorry, yet to cross 200 yards passing in like any of their outings, and they're looking to make a switch. So Drake May behind this very questionable offensive line of the New England Patriots is going to go out and get the start against a Texans team that is at 4-1 and one, just taking down the Bills. I'm going to be honest, I don't like our odds. I tried to uh, predict a victory last week against the Dolphins and we couldn't win there. So if we can't even beat the Dolphins, what are our chances against the Texans really? Uh, I don't like them at all. So as much as it pains me, uh, I'm predicting yet another New England Patriots loss. So, a Houston Texans victory here. After that, we get a divisional matchup between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the New Orleans Saints. This one should be interesting, you know. The Buccaneers just coming off a loss against the Falcons on Thursday Night Football, whereas the Saints coming off a loss on Monday Night Football to the Chiefs. I will say that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers looked far better than the Saints. The Saints only putting up 13 points against the Chiefs in that outing and the Buccaneers uh, barely losing that one in overtime. They took the Falcons to overtime with their full 550 yards of offense. Uh, so yeah, I don't know how the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense is going to respond, but offensively, uh, they've, been, they've been good uh, in pretty much every game except for the one ex against uh, the Broncos, I would say. And for the Saints, a hot start, but the last three weeks... I was thinking of it as close losses, but really they just, they're not the same team offensively. Back to back to back losses for the Saints. I don't know if they're going to be able to turn it around. Ideally, they would do that now, but I just like what I've seen from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers a little more than I like what I've seen from the Saints. And so I'm going with the Buccaneers here. Next up, we've got a matchup between the Cleveland Browns and the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, the Eagles coming off their bye week, one of the earliest byes in the year, and the Browns coming straight off of a loss against the Commanders. Uh, the Cleveland Browns look nothing like themselves last year. Sitting at a 1-4 record, they have been one of the league's worst. Uh, this Deshaun Watson offense is horrible, like he has been so bad this year. They have not been able to get their offense going in any game. Still unable to pass that 18-point mark that they set all the way back in week one, I think it was. As for the Eagles, it's been up and down. You know, I thought that they would do a little bit better than they have at this point. Uh, they've lost some. I mean, they beat the Saints when the Saints were rolling, but they also lost to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They lost another one earlier on, uh, which I'm not able to remember at the moment. But... Yeah, I, I did think that the Eagles were going to be slightly stronger than they have been. Nonetheless, I do think that they're able to pick up a victory here against a Browns team that is suffering badly. I 
their O-line is not good, their quarterback play is not good, still a little bit injured, and the Eagles coming fresh off a of bye, they should be well rested. I think that they dominate the Browns here. Next up, we have a delightful matchup between the Washington Commanders and the Baltimore Ravens. You've got two Heisman winning quarterbacks that love to throw the ball and run the ball in Jaden Daniels and Lamar Jackson. I think that these two quarterbacks do share some similarity in their skill set, what they bring to the table. The Commanders have been red hot out of week one, got the victory uh, the last four weeks in a row, obviously. Um, but they are setting records offensively. Jaden Daniels and this Commanders offense that has been. And uh, the Ravens, on the other hand, started off 0 2, but 3 wins back to back to back against the Cowboys, against the Bengals last week, and the Bills. So they've been an offensive juggernaut as well through five weeks. I will say, I think that the Commanders actually are a better team, um, at least on the offensive side of the ball. You talk about what the Ravens can do, 200 yards rushing. Commanders are one of the few teams that can also match that. Now, I do know that Brian Robinson Jr. is a game time decision, so we'll have to see if he suits up. But last week, even with him limited, they got 200 yards rushing. And Jaden Daniels has been able to connect with all these guys, ultra efficient in the passing game for the most part. Um, and he can he can throw it anywhere, really. Uh, Lamar, very impressive against the Bengals. So it's going to be tough. But we saw how this commander's defense fared against the... Uh, Cardinals, and then we saw how the Baltimore Ravens defense fared against the Bills. But I will say the difference in those two matchups is I don't think that the Bills have that many weapons. I think that we're going to see that collapse by the Bills offense at some point, and it happened to be against the Ravens. I don't think Baltimore has been an offense quite like this. You could say the Bengals last week did a great job, but you did have to take it all the way to overtime, and even in overtime, you nearly lost that game. So as time, as far as like hotter teams go. I'll say that the Washington Commanders are hotter than the Ravens, and I don't think that the Ravens have been someone quite like this. Uh, shout out to Quan Bon, you know, he's a adamant Commanders fan, watches the videos, and he has been pointing out how I continue to doubt the Commanders over and over, and I think I'm done with doubting them. I think he has proved me right time and time again, and I'm ready to see see the vision, you know, the commanders, they are going to be a lot better this year than I was anticipating, and at a record of 4-1, I'm going to go with the underdog pick here, 72% of people going with the Ravens, I'm going to go with the commanders getting the victory on Sunday here. Now, after that, we have a divisional matchup between the Los Angeles Chargers and the Denver Broncos, people are pretty 50-50 on this game, right now it's 52-48 in favor of the Chargers, who sit at a 2-2 record coming off their bye. Uh, but the thing here is, you've got two offenses that are okay. Uh, the Chargers really like their offensive identity in weeks one and two, uh, but their their opponents weren't the best. I mean, you're playing the Panthers, you're playing the Raiders. Then back-to-back -back losses against the Chiefs and the Steelers. I do think that this Denver Broncos team, their defense is fierce. It has been fierce the last couple of weeks, and I really like it. The offense has been doing just enough to get in the winning column. Um, and yeah, they had a record of 3-2 and two all these weeks in. Uh, the Chargers are a little bit more well-rested, but overall, if I have to pick a defense, right now I like the Broncos defense a lot more. Um, those last two weeks with the Chargers dropping to the Chiefs in that one week, offensively they just, they like the weapons, and it's not that the Broncos aren't that impressive offensively either, but we've seen how they've done the last three weeks against the Raiders, against the Jets, against the Buccaneers. Three weeks back to back to back, they have had very impressive defensive performances, and offensively, they're not turning the ball over. I understand that the Chargers defense is one of the better ones in terms of points, but I don't trust the Chargers offense all that much, and I don't know about their ability to run the ball or throw the ball against this Denver defensive front. So I'm going to go with this slight upset here. I know it's like basically 50-50, but I'm going to go with the Broncos getting another victory in this one. After that, we have a, 
a crazy matchup here in between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Las Vegas Raiders, two of the most devoted fan bases in the league. I think that this one will be very fun from the fan perspective. Uh, their histories go quite back. Steelers coming off of a loss against the Cowboys on Sunday night, but I don't think that they played that bad. Justin Fields was out for a good chunk of that game at the beginning of the second half. Uh, offensively, they weren't able to get much going for them, but they did do a great job of forcing turnovers. Uh, and as for the Las Vegas Raiders, you're benching Gardner Minshew in favor of Aiden O'Connell. And I'm not an Aiden O'Connell believer. I do think that he is the worst quarterback option. Uh, good on you for trying out who you have, switching it up. But we saw him throw a pick against the Denver Broncos. I think we see one to two picks once again this week. And ultimately the Steelers, they'll, if Justin Fields is healthy, they'll be the better team. So I'm going to go with the Steelers here, getting a win against the Vegas Raiders. After that, we have a matchup between the Detroit Lions and the Dallas Cowboys. This is a rematch from last year. We saw this late in the season in a very controversial ending. You had uh, Taylor Decker, one of the offensive linemen, reporting as eligible. Uh, they, they botched it. The referees did not understand who was eligible, who was not. The Lions get the game-winning touchdown. Um, or was it the extra point? Either way referees completely steal it from then and so the Cowboys you can say that they weren't stolen like maybe the Cowboys deserved to win that game maybe they didn't in my eyes I do think that the Detroit Lions should have won that game and so we have a, a fun matchup between two winning teams in uh, the NFC two top dog contenders from last year uh, and here I'm gonna give it to the Lions the Lions sitting at a 3-1 and record they are coming fresh off their bye. The uh, Cowboys, they just had a game on Sunday night against the Pittsburgh Steelers, in which I didn't love their performance back-to-back -back weeks, I think, against the Giants. And uh, the Steelers, they did get the job done, but there are glaring mistakes, you know. Lots of penalties against the Giants. And last week, two red zone interceptions and another turnover. Uh, the Detroit Lions defense is somewhat stout. Uh, and their offense was clicking on all cylinders against the Seahawks. So if we see something like that again, it's over them for the Cowboys. I think it'll be more competitive than that. I don't think they're going to get blown out by any means, but I do trust the Lions more at this point. So I'm going with a Lions victory here. Next up, we have a matchup in the NFC South division between the Atlanta Falcons and the Carolina Panthers. Uh, the Red Rider beating me. BB gun special is over. Uh, Andy Dalton does not look as red and fearsome as he did in his first two weeks last week. Completely stopped by that uh, Bears defense. And the Falcons defensively, they didn't do that great of a job against the Buccaneers, but offensively they have found their identity. Uh, Kirk Cousins with a franchise record in passing yards. Drake London looked good. Kyle Pitts looked good. Even Darnold Mo Mooney and... Uh, Hodge, I forget his first name, Kadarius Hodge, Calvin Hodge, something like that. Uh, Ray Ray McLeod, all of them getting in the mix. Not to mention B. Sean Robinson is on that team. Uh, offensively, I think it's going to be too much. I'm going with the Atlanta Falcons victory against the Carolina Panthers there. Then we've got an interesting Sunday night matchup between the Cincinnati Bengals and the New York Giants. The New York Giants getting it done shorthanded against the Seahawks last week in a very puzzling upset. Uh, you don't have Malik Neighbors, you don't have Devin Singletary, and still somehow you beat the Seahawks. I am impressed. The Bengals, on the other hand, a very impressive outing against the Ravens. Almost had it, lost in overtime. Really, they could have won if they made that overtime kick, but they just shanked it. Um, or it was blocked. I don't find, I think they shanked it. Um, so sitting at a record of one and four, but their offense has been magnificent in the last four weeks, three weeks. Um, yeah, J Jamar Chase, one of the best. Joe Burrow leading the NFL in touchdown passes after five last week. And this New York Giants defense, I don't think it's anything necessarily to rave about. Uh, they might get a turnover here and there, but I think the Bengals, Joe Burrow called them out. They're all gonna be ready and accountable. Obviously a big 
matchup last week against the Ravens. I wasn't expecting them to win because the Ravens were rolling in red hot. But I do think, like, it's time. They are sick and tired of losing. Joe Burrow has been doing everything. So unless he goes out there and really wets the bed, they are going to be playing fierce. And I think that the defense will do slightly better. The Giants are still operating without Malik Neighbors. I'm expecting the LSU wideout from uh, the Bengals to outperform the Giants' counterpart, and we're going to see a Bengals victory there on Sunday night. Finally, we move into a matchup from the AFC East division. It's going to be the Buffalo Bills versus the New York Jets. You know, if it wasn't for Robert Sala getting fired, I honestly would go Jets here. Uh, Jets not the most impressive, but they had a very difficult matchup last week. They suffered back-to-back -back losses against the Broncos and the Vikings. The Vikings, I'm not going to blame them as much. You know, it's a London game. You're technically the away team, even though that doesn't mean anything. Um, but two weeks where they just could not run the ball offensively. They threw three picks last week, and now their offense... Who knows what it's going to look like with Robert Tolick on. I know that he's more of a defensive-minded guy, but if you have a mid-season firing, it's hard to pick you as a team that is going to win. The Buffalo Bills, on the other hand, they suffer back-to-back -back losses against, you know, two pretty decent teams. You had the Ravens toppling them, and then last week the Texans, the Jets. I'm not going to lie, ideally I do want them to win here because I picked them to uh, sit at the top of this division, and I think it would be great for AFC East parity. You have the Dolphins and the Patriots kind of in the, sl in the slums, and if the Jets win here, both the Bills and the Jets sit at 3-3, three and three, the Jets very much can be in control of this division with a victory here. So personally, I'm rooting for it. But logically, I'm going to go with the Bills. I think that the Bills played much better last week compared to two weeks ago. Almost had it against the Texans. They really could could have done it. Uh, they couldn't quite pull it out. And yeah, we've seen more offensive struggles from them. But as far as coaching goes, I do trust this coaching staff way more. And the Jets, I don't know what they look like. Like maybe their defense won't be as good with Robert Solicon. Offensively, they've been a little bit of a mess in the running game. It's not been good. So one week after their firing, I can't trust them. I'm going to go with the Bills here. So that about does it for this week. Those are all my predictions. I'm going to bring back all of them once more so I can go through them one more time. I, on Thursday, I had the Niners over the Seahawks. Then on Sunday morning, early morning in London, I've got the Bears over the Jaguars. After that, I have the Packers over the Cardinals. Then we've got the Colts over the Titans. And then I have the Texans over the Patriots in Rick May. After that, going with the Tampa Bay, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers over the New Orleans Saints. Then we've got the Philadelphia Eagles over the Cleveland Browns. After that, going with my upset of the week with the Washington Commanders over the Baltimore Ravens. After that, we have the Denver Broncos over the Los Angeles Chargers. Then the Pittsburgh Steelers over the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, after that, the Detroit Lions over the Dallas Cowboys. And then we've got the Atlanta Falcons over the Carolina Panthers. Then uh, the Cincinnati Bengals over the New York Giants on Sunday night. And finally on Monday night, I'm going with the Buffalo Bills over the New York Jets. So that about does it uh, as far as when this video will go up. I'm hoping tonight we'll see. Uh, you may notice that I've got this black backdrop behind me now. I'm hoping this allows me to film on Sunday nights because earlier on my girlfriend was not comfortable with me using the room that late at night and she didn't want to be in the videos. So with this layer of privacy, I'm hoping that I can film on a more consistent basis, get to that three videos a week mark that I was hoping for. Uh, in terms of upcoming schedule, I'm going to do an NBA season prediction. Uh, I did one last year where I tried to predict what tier each team would be in as far as like uh, lottery team, play-in team, playoff team, uh, championship round. So I'm going to do something like that again. I know that one of you asked if I'm going to be doing a fantasy basketball uh, subscriber league, but 
my basketball knowledge is not as good and I really do have my hands tied up with these six subscriber leagues that I've got going on right now uh, for fantasy football. So the answer is no, unfortunately, but maybe next year, maybe next year. Uh, and yeah, as always, thank you for watching. If you enjoy videos like this, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be putting out more videos as